Hassan Fadi was one of the earlier architects that engaged with the ideals of alternative practice that today can be applied by present day socio technical practitioners. In an informal settlement such as Denver, where in situ upgrading is the intention, buildings may not necessarily be the outcome, as opposed to small interventions that may fulfill the enrichment of people's lives. This can be done by making people the center of architecture because man is the one who sees and feels the forces of nature. Fadi believed that this could be done by reintroducing human scale, human needs and human tradition into his architecture. Methods based on a regionalist approach are detailed for a place and a people because each region has its own specific supply of materials, climate and unique cultural heritage and psychology. Denver is located in a light industrial area in Johannesburg and is conveniently close to public transport, but it sits in what is known as a buffer zone, which was historically used to segregate racial groups of people in apartheid South Africa. In a context such as Denver, where polarities need to be synthesized, modern patterns are often merged with rural ones and require a synthesis of high and low technologies. Placemaking is a great technique for a regionalist approach. However, successful placemaking requires a deeper understanding of the needs and social patterns of the people. This can be done through a collaborative design effort that includes involving residences of the settlement as clients, co-designers, or even builders as seen in this diagram of Fadi's collaborative network. Our design team developed a similar system through a seven week engagement process. An ice breaking technique that we used was to hand out flyers to local residents, introducing ourselves and explaining our presence in a Zulu translation. We also avoided using cameras until a later stage. As outsiders, the team was exposed to unfamiliar conditions that were analyzed through observation as shown in the cycle of engagement diagram. The team then recorded this information using their design skills to map various layers. Through the process of overlaying a certain combination of layers, another level of enlightenment was reached that perpetuated a design proposal. The team's findings were displayed in a washing line style exhibition. Feedback from this exhibition was very essential in the planning process as the team had once again received valuable insight that could be filtered before the engagement cycle could start again. As part of our collaborative process, interviews with professionals in the emergency services reconfirmed the problematic access for service delivery resulting in a transgressive approach of re-blocking an informal settlement. In order for residents to fully grasp more complex planning concepts, an engagement tool needed to be developed. Empathy is a character that cannot be taught but can be used as a driving force in influencing the kind of questions that can result in invaluable information. Empathy also relates to the way in which those planning concepts are received. The team built models and used them as an engagement tool to help communicate planning ideas to residents. The models were easily understood by the residents because the stormwater channel stood out as a feature and the model could be spun around and orientated in relation to where the engagement was taking place on site. We also conducted on-site demonstrations of low-tech design solutions using recycled materials. For example, we incorporated a skill that many of the women already have of twisting artificial hair in order to make braids. We applied the skill with the use of recycled plastic bags to create a very strong rope 
to be used for a variety of functions. The act of making in order to demonstrate ideas proved to be a valuable tool in the collaborative process as some unexpected outcomes from the residents were so simple yet so enriching.